Welcome to Retire to a Life You Love with Michelle Gessner from Gessner Wealth Strategies. We inspire executives, professionals, and business savvy women to better their finances and overcome the financial stresses of life. We do all of this by giving the advice you need to identify your goals and the confidence to achieve them so you can retire to a life you love. Join us for this journey where we explore ways to win financially as Michelle draws from years of expertise and talks with today's top business minds about their wins, failures, and best practices. Welcome to Retire to a Life You Love with your host, Michelle Gessner. I'm Wendy McConnell. Hello there, Michelle. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. It's springtime. I'm ready to go. I am so excited about today's guest. Today, we are going to talk about all things Medicare. And we have Joanne Giardini Russell, who is the owner of Giardini Medicare, which is an independent agency that provides Medicare products to the public. And she and her team specialize in the transition to Medicare. That is all they do, Medicare. So if you need Medicare and you're worried about understanding all that you need to know, and there is a lot to know, she and her team help people get there in a stress-free and logical fashion. And we have sent some of our clients to her and they are very happy with how much help they provide. So welcome, Joanne, and thank you for being here. Oh my gosh, thank you for inviting me in. And it's not springtime here because it's Michigan. So I'm <laughs> envious of you guys. Well, you know, Medicare is probably not, you know, the most exciting topic, but you know, everyone asks questions. They come to me, they ask me questions. I know some about Medicare, but when they start right. getting into all the specifics, that's when I want to bring in an expert like you. So let's do this. I've got a few questions for you and hopefully you can kind of walk people through some of the things they should know. So let's start with the most basic question. What is Medicare and uh, what do people need to know? Perfect. And it, I make fun. I poke fun because it can be a dull subject, but it is super important, super important. And we know how stressful it is for people as they approach 65 and beyond that. So we'll start with the basics. We do actually try and, and I mean this in a positive way to sort of dumb things down, right? So Medicare is just health insurance. And if you think of you've had employer insurance, you've had purchased insurance, however you got your insurance for all those years prior to age 65, Medicare is just a new option for you. Some of you are going to qualify, some of you are not, some of you don't need it at 65, things like that. But just think of it as medical insurance. It makes people a little extra nervous because it's offered by the government. That's where you're buying it from. But don't make that make you nervous, right? It's just medical insurance. So try to put that in your you know, thinking cap and then move along. So people need to start thinking about Medicare as they approach the eligibility age, which is typically 65, right? Correct. So what should people be thinking about and what steps would you say they need to start taking? The biggest thing we can try and get across to the consumer typically is, um, do you need Medicare at age 65 or when you're eligible? You might be eligible for, because of disability at 53, for example, but that doesn't even mean that you have to go get Part B of Medicare. There's two components to Medicare, right? There's A and there's B. A is medical. I mean, yeah, A is hospital. I'm sorry. B is medical. But don't let that part get you nervous. The biggest thing is conceptually. Try and figure out if you actually need that insurance. Many, many people turning 65 years old do not need to enroll into the Medicare system because they are working. They have active employer coverage. Their spouse might be actively working, things like that. Even somebody on disability at 53, there's a good chance that they have a spouse that has employer insurance. So there's certain there's certain rules and numbers and things like that that you have to be aware of, but that's where it's your agent's job to kind of coach you through those situations. But at age 64, we know everybody gets very filled with anxiety and stress about Medicare. So Try not to listen to your friends and your family and your HR and your uh, all these people are trying to give you advice or trying to be helpful at times, um, but they're giving you a lot of wrong advice because we have lots of people that come in like, you have to get Medicare at 65 or you're penalized forever. Well, where'd you hear that? Well, my brother-in-law, because it happened to some third generation person he knew, right? One time. So again, find a good agent. Certainly does not have to be us. There's plenty, plenty of agents out there, but um, good agents know Medicare. So just keep that in mind too. Uh, Medicare specialized, I should say. 
But those are the big things you got to consider. And we always kind of laugh because it seems like a really basic question. Do I need it? Because you kind of sit there like, of course, everybody needs it, but that's not true. So assessing, do you need it is the absolute most important uh, piece. And if you do, then continue on the journey. And if you don't let it go for X amount of period, you know, time period. So you, you brought up the still working. And I think that's a question that I hear most often is, okay, wait, I'm still working. I don't need Medicare, but I'm 65. And I hear these, there's these rules about applying or, and and if I don't apply by a certain time, I'm going to pay a penalty for the rest of my life. Can you, can you help us understand just what people need to know about that? Definitely. That is so common. Everyone, not everyone, but lots of people are working at it. 66, 67, 68. Right now, GM um, buyouts are happening in my backyard, General Motors. A lot of activity with a lot of new retirees. So this is really common for us these last couple of weeks where we have a 68-year-old approaching us and saying, ah, when I talked to you when I was turning 65 three years ago, you guys told me I didn't need Medicare. And he didn't. So he was working at GM, is on that coverage we would typically say you you probably want to go get part A, the free medical por- uh, hospital portion. But if you're contributing to an HSA, you don't want to get part A. So there's a lot of little rules. So I can't be general even here today. But in that case, again, you're 68 now. Now you're getting a buyout offer and scrambling because, oh, no, I'm going to lose my medical benefits in two months. What do I do? That's when you're connecting back with that person you know from Medicare saying, ah, now I need it. So then we pick up now and start walking them through the process. And that process that you just talked about, Michelle, is actually very simple. We're going to give him a form. We're going to give him two forms, actually. One form is going to go to General Motors and it's going to say, hey, would you sign off and just, you know, reaffirm that that Joe has had coverage with you since he was 65 years old? Boom. Yes, he did. Here's your paper. He needs another form called a, a 40B as in boy. That's an application for Medicare Part B. Literally, those two forms go off to the Social Security Administration. They process things without a penalty. So that is as simple as it happens. Um, 4% of people receive this penalty that everyone is, 100% of people are scared about it. 4% of people receive that. (laughs) So do people get penalized? Yes. But we deal with, I'm not kidding, maybe two a year. We see it out of thousands of people. So don't let that penalty scare you, the bejeebers out of you. Can I ask a quick question? I wanted to know, um, I somehow was under the impression that Medicare was free. Is that that. (laughs) not? Yeah. I mean, I I love that. I just, just, (laughs) that's what I thought. As as everybody, as everybody laughs, right? Right. Free. (laughs) Why, why am I under this impression? Um, and, and how much is it actually? And, and the second part of that question is, if you are still working, wouldn't it be more financially beneficial for you to go on Medicare than stick with a, an employee-based healthcare plan? If it were free, sure. <laughs> okay. That's, that's the question. So a lot of people come in with that attitude or thought, and, and maybe not even a thought. Maybe you just never thought about it before. In the back of your head, you just sort of think it's free. We have people, the highest net worth people, and, and, and Medicare, the cost is based on income. So the reason I bring in high income folks is because those people will pay higher amounts and it can go all the way to about $600 a month per person for Medicare. So when you're coming in the back of your head, you sort of think it's three free and you hear like, what do you mean? 600 a month? Oh yeah. This is not a deal at all. <laughs> right. So back to the other part of that question is if you're still working, maybe your base rate with Medicare is 165, $164 and 90 cents is the base right now. Maybe your employer is giving it to you for free. The, every employer has a different situation. So there is no rule. And that's what makes it hard. Because if you turn 65 and you're still working, then you have another option. Medicare might be an option for you. It doesn't mean one is better than the other. Maybe your employer charges um, you 80% and they pay 20%. So your net cost might be 500 a month. If that's the case, you know, definitely go look at Medicare. But maybe your spouse is on the plan because of you, so you can't leave the plan, so you're tied to it. So you can see all the rabbit holes you start running into. Absolutely. But and it's not it, free. It's not free, and and I'm glad you you used that as a, you know that you explained all that. We had a client, we have a client that we referred to you to answer that very question. Uh, this client was is still working, and you did a cost benefit analysis for her so she could figure out if it made sense to stick with what she's got mm-hmm. or switch over to Medicare. So that that really helps. It does help. It's cost and coverage. You have to look at cost and coverage. 
when you're eligible for that next option. That's it. We try and leave it, like I said, pretty simple. Like you have now two options. Instead, when you're 64, you have one. When you're 65, you've got two. Does it mean you can do it or you should do it? No. That's all the assessment parts are going to come in with an agent walking you through all the pieces of it. And it is a giant rabbit hole. And everybody is unique. Everybody is different. That's why it's so hard when people say, you have to do this because, and you're penalized for life if you don't. And people believe that people will accidentally all day long, go sign up for Medicare. They're paying gobs of money extra. They don't need to be doing. And they're wasting, you know, coverage opportunities and a whole bunch of different things. So that's what we try and get people to stop doing that. Do you need it? Do you want it? If you do, let's continue the path and then, then price it out. So back to pricing, if, you know, again, if your base rate is going to be around 600, by the time you add a supplement and a drug plan, you're talking 800. So again, to tell the highest level of people that it's, you know, you're paying 1600 a month and maybe they had employer coverage for 500 a month and they are absolutely shell shocked. So it's not, and we were talking in the beginning, Michelle, healthcare as a general uh, beast is expensive. My own healthcare is horrible, expensive bad coverage because I'm 57. So right. employer insurance, we're seeing employer insurances all over the place, increase healthy clips, 10, 20, 30%. I've heard 49%, a client had a 49% increase on their health insurance renewal. So therefore we're having more people come to us to compare their workplace insurance with Medicare, of course. And then you've got companies. Companies would love to get you off those healthcare plans because you're expensive as a 65, 66. They can't legally do that, though. If the employer is a large employer, 20 or over, nobody can entice you off of and push you over to the Medicare system. So there's a lot of rules in our world, you know, dictated by CMS and things, you know, like that. But it, there's just a lot of moving parts to Medicare, no doubt. There are. And I just want to throw in there this, you know, since you said, and I'm sure it's kind of scary to some people, oh my gosh, I'm going to pay $600 for Medicare. If that is the case, that's because Medicare is looking at their AGI from two years ago, but it's done and it's redone every single year based on the the AGI from for the, you know, the last two years. Right. right. So it's not like they're going to stay $600 a month right. for, forever. Unless they're, they're, High income forever. It's all based on yeah. modified. So it's mod it's MAGI, modified Correct. adjusted gross. So they're always going to be looking back two years. So a great example of somebody that is pretty typical is um I talked to him yesterday from whatever state. He's making four hundred thousand now. He's working. He is retiring next month. So we start. So as soon as we hear that, I'm like, well, wait, you're going to retire. So what is your income going to drop to in 2023? And he said 140,000. Well, he's going to go from a mid-tier of 329 a month down to 165 a month. And his wife will also. So right there, I said, okay, so you're going to fill this paper out. I'm going to describe how to fill that out. You're going to send that to Social Security. And then they will reduce you both, each of you separately, because Medicare is all individual per person. But they're going to you know, bring you down from 329 down to 164.90. If they didn't do that, if I hadn't told them that form existed and he doesn't go through the channel of doing it now... Yes, naturally in two years, they're going to be looking back at 2023 income when it starts to fall. But here we're helping them save a whole bunch of money by doing it now and not waiting two years for it retroactively. But eventually your lifestyle will flatten down typically. And, you know, when, when those are working with you, they know their expected income, if you will. So that's what they're going to use on that form. So there's definitely the opportunity for lots of people to reduce that with a life changing event. We call that like due to retirement, death, divorce, work reduction, things like that. You're talking about that SS44, I think is the name of that yep, form. You and, got you're, and you're saying they can do that before they get hit with that Medicare Irma surcharge. A little bit. So what I we caution people, and it's kind of funny, we say, look, when you apply for Medicare now, because you're reducing your workload, you're going to get a letter from Medicare saying, hey, can, welcome aboard. It's 164.90. A week later, you're going to get a second letter. It's the government, right? Second letter says, oh, we looked at your tax return. So you really owe us $329. Okay. When you get that second letter, that is your time to launch that SS44 form. Because now they have something to look at Otherwise, if you just be proactive and say, ah, I retired, here's my form. They don't know what you're talking about. Right. It'll sit out. It'll just be kicked out in somebody's in bin for, for weeks and months. It'll never happen. Hi, it's Michelle. 
As you listen to today's episode, you may be wondering about your own situation and whether you've done all that you can to prepare yourself for the retirement you love. If you're not sure, it's a good idea to reach out and not leave things to chance. I want to help, so let's connect for a call. You can find all of my contact information, including my social channels, in today's show notes. Now, let's get back to today's program. So these are the types of things that that you can really help people Mm -hmm. understand. I I think people just are scared that they don't know what they don't know, which is very frightening. So I know there's, there's a lot we could talk about here today, and I know that we're just scratching the surface, but can you perhaps talk a little bit about the, the Medicare paths, you know, the, the supplemental plans versus Medicare advantage. Yes. So once we, all that stuff, you're right, is all with government and this and that kind of stuff. And then where we come in at that's uber important really is um, deciding and helping people pick a path to Medicare because you should pick, you don't have to, but you absolutely should pick one or the other. You should pick what we call a Medicare supplement or a Medigap contract and a drug plan or pick a Medicare Advantage plan. I'll go over them in, in briefly. There's there's a lot to it. We do have, you know, our own podcasts and YouTubes and everything to, to make this longer because I can't do it justice in two, three minutes. But Medicare supplement is a very simple, straightforward manner, meaning you you hook up your Medicare A and B, which are the two components, the hospital and the medical. And then you add to that, or we add, an agent will add this to your world, a supplement. And a supplement can be $150 a month, $120, $200, depends on where you live and your age. And you add that supplement. And that supplement is going to take over all of the bills because you have to remember that Medicare is only going to pay 80%. So you're buying this contract to pay the bills. All it does is pay the bills. We try and get that really across to people because if you buy that supplement from the ABC insurance company. It doesn't matter if your doctor says we don't take the ABC insurance company. Medicare is your primary insurance. So it doesn't matter what that doctor's office says. And then we get into the whole level of billing offices and issues and things like that. But that's how it works. It simply is there to pay your bills. You pay a flat premium per month. You have a $226 annual deductible, which in my mind is pretty darn reasonable. You have to add a drug plan. You can go see any doctor in the country that takes original Medicare, which is 96% of doctors. It's very, very easy. It's very, very good, solid coverage. There's a variety of plans, though. You can pick a plan G, a plan N. I'm not going to go into those details, but just know there's a couple different, you know, price points, budget-wise, things like that, and different uh, options. The flip side to all of that is what we refer to as Medicare Advantage, Some people refer to it as Part C. If you actually look at the Medicare in your handbook, they do refer to it as Part C. A little bit of a misnaming just because people come in saying, well, I need A, B, C, and D. Well, you don't really need all of those things together. So Part C is Medicare Advantage. And again, looking at the Medicare in your handbook, I love page 10. It talks exactly about what this is. It's a bundled alternative to Medicare. Now, what confuses people is they're paying their Part B premium. Now, matter what they do, no matter what path you're going to take here, you're paying your Part B premium regardless of your path. However, if you pick the Medicare Advantage plan path, which I just said is a bundled alternative, you are no longer operating in the Medicare system. You are operating in the carrier world. So an insurance company that you choose to enroll in is going to have a network for you. They're going to dictate your fees, your pricing, your prior authorization, perhaps, things like that. So you really have to look at those plans and decide if you can adhere to or are willing to, you know, go by the rules of the plan. That's it. So you don't have the freedom necessarily of original Medicare, but you do have things like zero premium per month. You do have dental. You've got all these perks and bells and whistles. You've got a max out of pocket. So they can be very um, bright, shiny object for sure. Just as a warning, just be careful. You know, all the details. And the biggest thing you got to really understand is what happens if you don't like it? What happens if you're in that plan, you're healthy, and then five years down the road, you're not healthy, and you decide like, hey, I want better coverage, and I want to go to MD Anderson, I want to do what I want to do. You're going to go through medical underwriting. In most states, to go get a supplement five years after that point, you're going through medical underwriting, and there's a good chance at that point, if you've got an issue, you're going to get declined, meaning you can't have that product. So many people think that the fall 
that open enrollment time when Joe Namath pops up on TV in October, right? That they think <laughs> that they can just call any agent and get whatever they want because it's on TV and they said I could just change whatever I want. That is not true. So that's the biggest thing to really to get across to people is you just, that's why we spend a lot of time up front making sure you know the rules and the pitfalls so that you're making an educated decision when you get in. Cause it's just, it's not the ACA. There's no guarantee. It's not employer insurance, right? Where you just sign up for a new plan every year. You can do that. I, I think that's a really important part. And I want to make sure our listeners really understand that there, what you're talking about is pre-existing conditions and mm-hmm getting it right the first time with this decision of Medicare Advantage versus Medicare, you know, Medigap plans offered by Medicare itself. Mm-hmm. Please help people understand. I, I think it just bears repeating what mm-hmm. that, that that they have if they go one direction mm-hmm. and then they don't like it, that they're going to have to go through this this medical underwriting that may not be easy for them to pass. Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to have you clarify that that a little bit. I, I will clarify that. And then, uh, and this is a really good example. Someone called a couple of years ago and I'll never forget because she, I asked her, she, she had a, a, a large carrier. It doesn't matter who Medicare Advantage plan. And she was 67. And I said, so how did you buy your plan a couple of years ago at 65 years old? She said, I called 1-800 Medicare and you can do that. And they're going to sell you a Medicare Advantage plan. They don't sell Medigap policies. So we started talking and she said, I just, you know, it's been pretty good. And it's been free and all this kind of stuff. And I just feel like things are kind of breaking down. I'm 67. So we started talking about her health because that's what you have to do for medical underwriting. She was in Georgia. And um, heart heart issues that will preclude her from getting a Medigap plan. So I had to tell her that she doesn't qualify and she can't get that with any carrier because of her history with health. Um, Medicare.gov, I mean, Medicare doesn't, they don't talk like that on the phone. You're calling a call center, center when you call Medicare. Right. So their job is to enroll you in Medicare Advantage plans. So, you know, take it with the grain. You just got to be careful of that and just don't assume that you can just bounce around and do what you want to do. If you take a Medicare supplement and then all of a sudden it's too pricey, you just can't handle the price anymore in three years. That's fine. You can, at certain times of the year, you can go to a Medicare Advantage plan with zero underwriting. They welcome it and you're fine. So, it's really just understanding the rules. In the beginning, and this always causes people concern because some people listen to this at 64 years old and they're they're really worried because oh my gosh I have x pre-existing condition. Don't worry about that because when you're brand new to Medicare, you can be 65 years old, 68, 70, it doesn't matter when, but when you are brand new like my GM guy I was talking about at 68, he's going to be brand new to Medicare part B, he gets a 6-month window that I can give him any product in the sun that he wants, anything without medical underwriting. So everybody is entitled to that six month window. They just have to be 65 plus and just starting that part B for the very first time. So it's a big privilege to have that six month window and it's just something to pay attention to. We're not trying to scare people. We're just trying to really just make sure they understand because there's plenty, there's millions of people that want Medicare Advantage plans because of the zero premium. I just believe it's oversold. You've got the commercials. There are more complaints to Medicare in the last few years due to the popularity of the plans. There's so many more commercials. There's so many more plans, just even availability. They've doubled in five years. So, so what, more people what you're don't saying, know what they're doing. Yeah, no, I see it. And I'm I'm hearing it too from my clientele. So what you're saying is if you start out with a Medicare Medigap plan, you can stay on that plan, whatever, you know, A through Z, whatever it is these days. Right. But if you start out with a Medicare Advantage plan, which is a private insurance plan, then you may not, if your health deteriorates, you may not get to go back to the Medigap plan unless your health is good. Is that what you're saying? I am. And then there's even more. Unfortunately, there's all the technical things. So if you start a Medicare Advantage plan, literally at age 65, the month you're turning 65, you do have a window um, and it's 12 months of trial rights. So trial rights just mean you can literally try that product for six uh, for 12 months. If you don't like it, you can bail and you can go get a Medigap plan with no medical underwriting also. Problem is the healthy people pick that. They never get out after 12 months. It's free. It's great. I got everything going. So they stay in it. So they know that right? The carriers know that. Um, that's one type of trial rights. But however, when people hear about trial rights, they think that a six to my GM guy who's 68 retiring from GM, if he thinks the same thing and it, it goes and takes Medicare Advantage, he, and we've had that we have this happen a lot. They're like, well, I heard I get trial rights for 12 months. 
No, you have to be age 65. So you can see there's all these little nuances that the agent has to help you through because you'd never know this stuff. So some people argue that, well, I'm 68. I just started Medicare Advantage. I get 12 months of trial rights. No, you don't. And they call Medicare or carriers and they agree they can't get it. So there's just, and then if they miss that ability, then yes, you there are there's so many situations where you will not get a Medicare supplement. Um, and then we hear it's not fair. It's the, you know, ACA, you're protected against pre-existing. And like, no, you're not. This is Medicare. This is not those times any longer. So it's a totally different ball game. Hardest part is again, you're 65. It's like, you don't want to learn this garbage, right? You just want to go retire. <laughs> right? We hear no. it all the time. People I don't, don't want a PhD want in Medicare. No, nobody wants don't a PhD to know it. Medicare. Right. I love that. But right. let me, let me just ask you one more question about Medicare Advantage. Mm-hmm. We, we know that the big selling point is that there are zero premiums. Mm-hmm. So what is it that people complain about when they, uh, in t- you know, in general, mm-hmm. when they don't like the Medicare Advantage plans? When they are told that they can't go to a skilled nursing facility, when they are told that they can't get home health care, when they have to wait four weeks for a, um, an injection in their knee from prior authorization, things like that. So there's and- no prior authorizations with Medigap plans? No. No, because it follows original Medicare. Original Medicare will, we've never seen a prior authorization case with original Medicare ever. Now, Medicare Advantage, they do happen and people need to appeal them and you're dealing with the carrier and that's the whole thing that people don't like. Think about insurance. Everybody loves their insurance when it's free and it's zero and you're not using it, right? And then you go to use it and something significant, that's when you start yelling. And that's what happens with it. Everyone loves the free dental. They love the freebies and the -the over-the-counters. And and I'm not saying they're bad plans. They've got an absolutely appropriate place in the world. There's not everybody can afford Medicare, Medigap, you know, Medicare plus Medigap, and that's okay. Um, But you just have to understand the rules that come along with that, right? So it's um, buyer beware to some degree. But we do, you know, you have to be educated about the whole system, the system, the products. And again, that goes back to people just don't really want to dig. You just don't want to spend 20 hours learning Medicare. And I get that. They don't. Medigap, mm-hmm. Is Medigap a cert set price or is that something that's also based off how zip much code? Is? That Medigap is based on your age, zip codes, smoker, non smoker, a whole bunch of different factors and where you live. In New York, it could be $300. In you know, Kentucky, it could be $94. Okay. So uh, uh, runs across the same thing around the gamut. The same with max out of pockets for Medicare Advantage plans. Sometimes in Vegas, they could be $2,000 max out of pocket. That's actually pretty darn great. So if you agree to stay in the services of the Vegas vicinity, there's. It, a lot of people love it because they don't care about the network. They've got a good network. And if you're good with that, you might be fine. So it's really, really hard. And um, it's not an easy decision for people. We did a survey a couple of years ago and 65% of our own clients just said, and here we, we educate them a lot, but they said 65% said the hardest thing with Medicare was picking Medigap over Medicare Advantage. And it's true. And I think this sounds kind of silly, but because we have a choice of two products and paths, that's what makes Medicare hard. If yep. you didn't have a path, if it was all just Medicare Advantage and you had to pick one of 60 plans in Detroit, I could help you do that in half an hour, right? But you've got this, uh, you know, big, oh my gosh, you might not be able to get in, that kind of thing, you know, feeling like it's following you. And then you've got your friends like, well, why did you buy it? Why are you spending anything? I got zero. It's the best thing since right. sliced bread. And then they all oh, compare gosh. and they, we hear them at dinner time. I hear them in restaurants all the time comparing their Medicare plans. Like I get this and I get, they're not on the same meds. They don't go to the same doctors. They don't, you know, travel Just in the same. So they have to go to the home. Exactly. Exactly. It's so funny, but it's just a universal chatter thing. Guys go on golf events talking about their Medicare plans and one upping each other. Right. Well, I don't pay a thing and you do, but you're not going to admit it. Right. So it's hilarious. But there's no such thing as free lunch. There's always something you got to know when it's free. That's when you really need to pay attention because it's not really free. Um, right, right, right. So if, and and I know we're, we're getting close to the end of our our time here, but I just want to have you explain to folks. So if, if someone's already in Medicare, they, they've made these decisions, it's kind of a, a done deal perhaps, or like when, when, when should people be calling you if they want your help? They should really be calling you know, three to four months before you're either retiring or turning 65. And I know everyone gets a little anxious. We've got people a year in advance with somebody recently, 10 years. They want to do Medicare planning in 10 years from now. And we're like, no. <laughs> so, um, you know, three to four months is, is really adequate. You can't even do anything filing for Medicare until three months before your birth month. So, um it can be done. We can, you can, you can listen to, you know, again, I'm on, I'm on TikTok every day doing, you know, it's 58,000 people now watching on TikTok and learning Medicare. That's a great way to learn. And then you kind of know us, you can kind of, 
you know, you know, to, to just three to four months. Um, and that's, I guess, I'm more than adequate to go get all their retirement papers and everything in order. So that to me is ideal. And then when they're in, when they enroll through us, they do get the ability to, you know, we have a customer service team that helps them with, you know, drug issues or, you know, I got five emails this morning, you know, can, you, can someone call me on such and such? And then our team takes over for that because, there's always going to be a question with Medicare. And I will just, just harp on people and really try and get this across. Don't enroll through an insurance carrier. The carrier's not going to help you with your paperwork. They're not going to help you with things after the fact, unfortunately. And I work for carriers. I love carriers, some of them. Um, but you're not going to get the service you are with as, as a, an agent agency because we're paid to help you. And we feel strongly about doing that. So I've got a whole team of people that help. Well, Joanne, thank you so much. You've been wonderful. And I know this is a confusing topic and we're just so grateful to have you as a resource. And, and for those of you listening, this is all Joanne does. She doesn't do anything else but Medicare. And there's so much um, to know and all the moving parts. So I hope that, uh, that this has been uh, valuable for, for people as they listen. And, and Joanne, how can people reach you? You can call the main office at 248 248- 871-7756. And we do have multiple agents that work in multiple states. You're probably not going to be getting an appointment with me on the phone, just a, a warning because <laughs> I do all the social stuff. Everyone thinks they have to talk to me and that's not true. You're going to be on great. TikTok. Yeah, I'm mean, on TikTok. So everyone has to talk to the TikTok lady. It's hilarious. <laughs> the other way, I will answer emails though. My own personal, I will answer all the emails at info at G Medicare team dot com. And maybe you can just throw that in the show notes and people can contact us. That Absolutely. Way. Well, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you to both of you, Michelle, how can people get in touch with you? Yes. So people can reach me at 713-589-6448. And if you don't have any way to write that down, just go to our website, gesnerwealthstrategies.com. And thank you for joining us today. Please like, follow, and share this podcast with your friends. Until next time, I'm Wendy McConnell. Thank you for listening to Retire to a Life You Love with Michelle Gessner from Gessner Wealth Strategies. We hope you were inspired to take steps to your financial freedom as you learned new techniques and strategies for managing your finances. To learn more about how you can improve your financial landscape, Visit our website at www.gessnerwealthstrategies.com. That's G E S S N E R wealthstrategies.com. Or give Michelle and her team a call at 713 589 6448. And don't forget to click the follow button below to be notified when new episodes are available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Michelle Gessner or Gessner Wealth Strategies. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.